The last couple of years were filled with hacktivism and cyber attacks. The targets were many and their misfortune ended up on newspapers' front page. Today's cyber war is silent and it's not always obvious that we are under attack. But is your organization under attack? And if it is, what should you do? How should you protect your environment? This is the main focus of the Checkpoint 2013 Security Report available at Checkpoint.com. This video summarizes the key findings of the report and Checkpoint's recommendations on how to fight the modern cyber war. Our methodology for this research was simple. We analyzed 900 customer networks for a total of 120,000 hours of monitored traffic across various industries in 62 countries. We also analyzed information from ThreatCloud, our collaborative threat knowledge base. We have thousands of sensors and gateways deployed and connected to ThreatCloud, updating that knowledge base with threat information real-time. This presentation is based on real stories, the stories of companies' real networks and the real fight against cybercrime. Let's start with the bot story. It started on September 12, 2012. Spear phishing emails were sent to several recipients inside the New York Times. Three individuals clicked on the malicious link. Once they clicked, they were infected and the bot made its way into the New York Times network. The bot itself communicated to a couple of universities in the U.S. that already had been participating in separate attacks in the U.S. as unknown victims. Boundaries in the cyber world have changed and even disappeared. It is becoming impossible to figure out where attacks are coming from and from where hackers are working. The traditional framework we used has changed. After two weeks, 42 New York Times computers had been infected and the bot continued to spread inside the network without anyone noticing. Finally, it got to the domain controller and managed to get the usernames and passwords of New York Times employees. At that stage, the hackers had full control of the New York Times network worldwide. From there, the hackers broke into the email inboxes of the editor of the New York Times in South Asia and another reporter more likely to find sensitive information about articles and sources. So how is this relevant to your corporation's security? You probably think you are not a likely target for such attacks. According to our findings, 63% of the organizations we surveyed had bots in their network. They didn't know about it, but the infection was there and clearly active. These bots were communicating with their command and control centers roughly 60 times a day. Bots are not new, but they are evolving and persistent. Here are the latest and greatest bots. The first one is Zeus, a familiar bot which has been around for two to three years and is specifically known for targeting financial credentials. To its infamous credit, about 30,000 accounts have been hacked and close to $50 million has been stolen through the Zeus bot network. The second bot, Wasek, allows hackers to penetrate the network and search for specific files. The bot can delete the files or send them outside of the network, and you do not even know it is happening. So what is the best way to fight this cyber war? First and foremost, it is all about prevention. In today's cyber world, detection is not enough. Only preventative solutions will effectively protect your network. Secondly, multi-layer protection is key, and the first layer should be anti-bot. Anti-bot security cuts the communication channels and quarantines the host machines to prevent all future damage. The checkpoint solution is unique in the market by stopping bot activity after the infection. But the anti-bot layer is not enough. When we analyzed the New York Times story, email attachments embedded with malware and links to risky web applications were at the heart of the attack. One of the ways a host can be infected is by opening a malicious file. If the malware is known, antivirus will prevent the infection. But if the malware is still unknown, you could run it in a threat emulation sandbox environment and observe its behavior. Does it communicate outside of the network? Does it modify registry? Or does it execute programs? We can learn about the file and prevent any unknown malware from penetrating the network. Then there are risky web applications. The web has changed and our usage of the web has changed as well. We used to go to specific URLs. Today, we're mostly using applications. Whether Facebook, LinkedIn, or a game, we are not going to a URL. We are going to an app. But some of these applications are very risky for your network. 
During our research, we used our application control software blade to see which apps were used on the corporate network. And surprise, surprise, customers learned that employees were using anonymizers to bypass the security rules of their organization. We also noticed usage of remote administration tools. Remote admin can be a good tool if used by a help desk to connect remotely to an employee's PC to solve a problem. But if used by people to get full access to your computer, these tools become very dangerous for the integrity of your network. We also saw that many employees are sharing files in the cloud. About 70% of organizations are using Dropbox, and many are unsure of how to protect sensitive data moved to Dropbox. When employees want to download music, movies, or other things freely, they connect to a peer-to-peer -peer network through the corporate network. They are connecting to a big community that you don't know, that you don't trust. By doing so, they create a back door to the corporate network, making this untrusted community a part of it. With this back door, attacks can find their way to your network and sensitive data can be leaked outside your organization. In our report, 61% of organizations are running peer-to-peer -peer applications. There is some productivity gain from applications such as Dropbox, but in the case of peer-to-peer, -peer, there is no real benefit to the organizations, though they bring a huge risk. This is where a secure web gateway can help, but we are talking about a different web gateway than what you have today. Web gateways are primarily used to get a faster connection to the internet with proxy and caching, or to block employees from going to outrageous sites such as porn or gambling. These are not enough. A secure web gateway needs to prevent access to malicious websites and to help employees to not go to the wrong places. Our report shows that 75% of researched organizations access bad sites on a regular basis. It is time for a next-generation secure web gateway. A secure web gateway should include an effective URL filtering that is updated regularly from a threat knowledge base like ThreatCloud, Checkpoint First Collaborative Threat Knowledge Base with information on sites used by botnets. It also needs to include application control. Checkpoint today has the largest coverage of applications and the most comprehensive solution to secure the web, which is a combination of a URL and then application control in one single policy. Now let's go back to external threats and attacks. Specifically, SQL injections. A specific attack occurred in Italy roughly from July to October 2012. The target was a university, and more particularly, its web servers. They saw roughly 6,000 attacks on their web servers, with 4,000 of them happening in two days. Hackers tried to penetrate an application by exploiting a vulnerability then injected SQL code and gained access to the database. In most cases, the ability to use SQL injection is based on the fact that there is vulnerability inside an application. And most of the applications in the world have vulnerability. It takes time, but once hackers find it, they are inside. Once again, can it happen to your organization? Our research shows that 53% of organizations have unpatched systems or systems with vulnerabilities. 5,000 vulnerabilities are discovered from commercial vendors such as Microsoft, Oracle, and Adobe every year. There is a way to stay protected during the critical periods of vulnerability between patches. First, have a firewall as basic access prevention. Second, use an intrusion prevention system. Use an IPS that has the best catch rate for different vulnerabilities from Microsoft and Adobe, such as the Checkpoint IPS, which got the best scores in NSS group testing. If your network is behind that IPS, even if it is not patched, there is a good chance that the IPS will block the exploit and the attack from entering your systems. Lastly, use a Checkpoint DDoS protection. DDoS is a very common and well-known attack technique. DDoS today has evolved from volumetric to low and slow. You need to have a solution that can understand your specific traffic and focus on blocking the attack, not the legitimate traffic. That's exactly what Checkpoint DDoS Protector does. The last topic is data loss. Most of the data losses we have seen lately are caused by employee mistakes. Whether data resides in your network, in your systems, inside your mobile devices, laptops, or smartphones, you need to protect it. So here as well, there is a need for multi-layer protection. Let's turn to the UK for another case study. This story happened in a city council in England just last year. A lawyer went to work, got a new laptop, and needed to send sensitive information to a colleague. His address book was empty, so he typed the email address manually with a typo. He sent 11 emails to the wrong recipient. In the UK, there are strict laws about data privacy, and there were lawsuits filed. 
As a result, the company was fined £120,000. Again, ask yourself once more, can this happen to us? And the answer is yes. It can happen in various ways. For example, in Canada, USB drives with 2.4 million unencrypted voter records were lost. In the US, an employee uploaded a file with 110,000 social security numbers and tax identifiers to the internet. In Australia, 2,500 records of former Australian Defence Force members were sent to 400 ex-employees. People are losing information all the time. 54% of organizations in our research experience data loss. We saw a lot of credit card information, source code, salary information, bank accounts, and so on. These were sent outside of the network and many times corporations did not know about it. Encryption, protection, and multi-layer prevention can help from these types of losses. First, encrypt both hard drives and USB devices. If something happens to these, then fine, no harm done. Second, just don't protect the devices themselves. Protect the files with document security. That way, if documents go out of the organization to an unauthorized user, they will not be able to open them. To summarize our research, three main findings should be kept in mind. 63% of organizations are infected with bots. Most of them do not know about it. 61% are using peer-to-peer -peer applications. Many are malicious and are very harmful to your organization. About 54% of people experience data losses. That's quite a massive number. To protect against all of that, you need one security strategy, multi-layer prevention. As a matter of fact, only a multi-layer approach will protect you against multi-layer attacks like Red October. Red October was discovered in October 2012 and is believed to have been around for five years. The targets were international governmental agencies in Eastern Europe and Asia. The objective of the attack was to gather intelligence through PCs, smartphones, and network devices. First, there was the initial infection. Spear phishing emails were sent with Microsoft Excel and Word documents attached. These documents had malicious code embedded exploiting vulnerabilities in Microsoft Office. Then, 1,000 different variants of malicious code such as DLLs, EXEs, and Trojans were installed on the PCs where the download happened. Once the bots were installed, they started communicating to 60 command and control centers around the world. The hackers constantly modified the malicious code and made it undetectable by traditional antivirus systems. If we look at the various components of this attack, we can see that IPS could have prevented the successful exploit of Microsoft vulnerabilities and therefore blocked the malicious downloads. And if the documents were opened, threat emulation could have assessed them in a sandbox environment to observe their malicious behavior before infecting the network. Finally, if bots were successfully installed, anti-bot technology could have stopped their communication to the 60 command and control centers. But this was not the end of Red October. Phase 2 installed spy modules into specific machines within the target's networks. These spy modules were meant to steal data that they encrypted and sent to the command and control servers. All of this is normally detected and prevented with antivirus. In addition, when specific data such as emails and attachments are targets, document security is key so that any unauthorized individual getting access to a protected document will never be able to open it. If the spy modules did not find the confidential data they were looking for on the infected PCs, they could steal data from smartphones that connected to the infected PCs. With stored contact information, call and browsing history, emails, and SMS, mobile security is a must. The estimated damage from the Red October attack is 5 terabytes of stolen confidential information. This multi-vector attack is a perfect illustration of modern-day threats and is, unfortunately, by no means an isolated case. Only a multi-layer threat prevention strategy and solution can help corporations avoid being the victims of such attacks. The layers should include IPS, antivirus, antibot, threat emulation, document security, and mobile protection. Checkpoint multi-layer security includes all of these security applications and more, consolidating all aspects of security and providing unprecedented visibility and control of your network security infrastructure. In addition, Checkpoint enables you to manage all gateways from a single location for ease of use and greater visibility. Finally, Checkpoint gateways are connected to Checkpoint Threat Cloud, a real-time security intelligence knowledge base that updates gateways with new malware, attacks, and bot information for up-to-the-second protection. 
ThreatCloud is dynamically updated from a worldwide network of threat sensors and has a repository of more than 300,000 malicious websites, over 250 million bot addresses, and over 4.5 million malware signatures. With this security architecture implemented on your network, you will be well positioned to protect your organization against known and unknown malware and know what is lurking inside your network at any time. Thank you.